Oh, tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about... Well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a... Uh, when he was a taxi driver... Yeah. You used to have to... Uh, Sort of do you do your bit for the local area? Oh God! By taking the uh, the yeah. forest, the forest yeah. gump yeah. people to to Blackpool. Yeah, is that what they're called now? The forest gump people. <laughs> is that what the uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> for them to be referred to a as? mini bus with <laughs> exactly. uh, life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. Com. Well, oh, right. gump types. It yeah. must be. So you work with these people. These it was, pe yeah, yeah, right, yeah. The people with learning difficulties. difficulties well. yeah. yeah, and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> <laughs> So he got five of them in the uh, in the cab, yeah. and he had to go to Blackpool. And four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff. But there was one who was just causing loads of trouble, and he couldn't control him. Oh, and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's it's not good for them. It stresses them out, and and you could end up with a bit thanks, Doctor Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. So, <laughs> so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now, and. He pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool and um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Oh, he did what? Oh, he God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. He was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. Can you stop saying it? Him. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, was... and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked him <laughs> up, and it, it was fine. He had a good. What day. he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. Some of those one. <laughs> what know, he tied him up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella, and like he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that, so it was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but anyway, that's I didn't really want to talk about. It. You just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you did, do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> well, because he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus, <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall, and yeah. it was miles away. And um, he took him there. There was no problem. About about ten old women in a in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled over. It. <laughs> no, right. So he took him there. Uh, Everything's fine. He dropped him off. They had a the lovely pin. night. Yeah. Right. They had a lovely night. Won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, "I want to be dropped off here. Take me there. I want to be dropped off first. I've got to get up early. Blah blah. You know, my husband's expecting me. I'm already late. Take me here first. Take me there. And he just pulled up. In the middle of nowhere, said, "Get out!" <laughs> and uh, he made them get out. And they all called for taxis. They charged that company who was meant to be taking a moment in the minibus, and he got the sack. Jeez. But a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah, they're just all like, "I want to be t dropped off first. Take me here first. Take me. Yeah. So he acts like it. a madman. Rookie Gervais film review. Sure. Review. Right. Chosen Rain Man. Rain Man. Okay. Now this yeah. has been on TV quite a few times, and it was a multiple Oscar winner. Exactly. Okay. So, okay. Right. Rain Man. It's got Tom Cruise in it, yep. and he's all right. He's normal, but he finds out he's got a brother who's a bit mad. Dustin Hoffman is doing it, right? And it's meant to be. He's all weird, but he's meant to be. So it's good acting. Now, he. Oh God. He needs to keep his brother, but they don't want him to have a brother, and. He doesn't remember a lot, but he dropped him in the bath and burnt him when he was little. Clumsy idiot. But then he finds out he can make a bit of money, so they get the same suits, and they go, bet two for good, well, because he's got special powers. So he can know what the what the roulette. He wins that, and he drops some toothpicks. He knows how many there are. And he recognises the waitress he's just through, through the book. He's got all his football cards. Don't put them out of order. Don't go in the telephone box with him, he smells. And get him back in time for Jeopardy or watch it. Anyway, then they slap his head and get worried. Qantas don't crash. So he's, he's got... A, all that, and in the end, he doesn't. I don't think, but they're, at least they've met each other. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Rayman, a film about autism, which is strangely appropriate, I think, when you're reviewing it. Anyway, what would you give it out of uh, ten? Oh, nine. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Were you useful? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the film before? No, but no. I, I, I will now. Okay, <laughs> jolly good. Well, uh, excellent. You well, don't talk to anyone, do you? In the week, you just hide in your little sound booth thing, and you really don't talk to anyone, do you? Much. Not really. 
No. You know, I mean, you you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Yeah. Sure. Is there yeah, a lot yeah. of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Proved your point. So, so, so yeah. when um, we're away and we're, like, out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of uh, uh, f- feedback from the world? How will you get sort of, like, input and... I always, if I've ever, uh, if I've, ever I've got, like, a, a question on anything... The internet's sat there, and I can just go on online and find out. The what internet I need to... is is good. It's brilliant, but it, it's not all verified. What do you mean? Uh, it's not all verified. It's not all factually necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's that you know that it's, it's it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like here's, here's one that I read in the week. Right? Go on <laughs> about this woman. Yeah, uh, she was a bit of a punk, and. Um, to get her hair done like she wanted it. Super glue. Right, no. She mm. got lard. Apparently it's a popular thing, you might you might know. Um put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now apparently the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer. Right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh she comes into money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave. Right. It doesn't it's not true. Carl. Opens the door, jams the things, you know, like the little catch so so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Pops the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Right? Well why is that ridiculous? <laughs> boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> she boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that, and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr- Crowe, when he dies, is is given his his brain to charity or something, some sort of <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> Vesta. Yeah. Oh, that's boiling the a skull. Yeah. That's that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. It's the same as the woman who put her poodle in the microwave, isn't it? And all it's that. Just urban myths. They're but, urban myths. But again. Where does it start? Someone made it up. Yeah. For a laugh. They're, they're just too convenient, urban myths. Everyone to You can tell an urban myth not to really go, because it's always, this happened to a mate of mine, and and the, and the, when you say, what happened then, they go, don't know, that was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Someone boiled a brain, and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Were there any dates, locations, you, ever, times? Uh, I think it was in Belgium. There's that, there's that, there's that... <laughs> <laughs> There's that one that a bloke, right, was going to get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was um, broke, destitute. So uh, 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 dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the, the, the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who 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 told that story? Who told that story? As he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour. He's the only person who could have known those that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he he's wait? Dead. As his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I I'm going to give it five minutes just in just case. Just in case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. And this and what sort of what sort of bloke goes? Out, I'll call you at four. Okay, if your business... Well, call me anyway. No, no. If I don't call exactly four, then, uh... No, you yeah. c- commit suicide. Commit suicide? <laughs> I would, because if I don't call at four... Oh, that's the end of it. Well, call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> why can't you just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you how I do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case something goes wrong? What if it's engaged? It won't be engaged. <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it, it didn't happen, Carl. I went on holiday after Christmas, yeah, yeah. and um, so did uh, our mutual friend, Phil Bowker. Yeah, good man. He, 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 he was in Lanzarote and he told me one of the funny... I don't know if I can tell this on the radio. I'll have to say the C word. I'll just go... It's in a sentence, so i just go, you see when it comes, and you'll know that he's saying the sure. terrible word. Um, just, you know, didn't want to ruin the anecdote. Anyway, uh, they're walking along one evening in Lanzarote, and there's lots of Brits there, apparently, and Phil overhears... Uh, a sort of married couple arguing. They're having to go home a bit early. And she's saying to him, she went, for Christ's sake, every time we come out drinking, you always shit yourself. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> right? Wow. Always, not once. So he's going, oh, it's, I've told you, he said, it's not the drink, it's the weather. She went, the weather. You'll be blaming the food next, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they should have oh. got married. Wow. Or when did you think the shooting itself started? It must have been after the marriage, because if it, if they, you know, you're caught in, and you go, went, went out with uh, uh, Derek again, did you last night? Yeah, how was it? It was the evening, it was lovely, the meals must be shut himself again. <laughs> that's, that's five dates, five different heaps of shit. But I think I can change him. I think I can change him, yeah. It <laughs> must have happened after the marrying. Or he just might have think, oh, God, I've got... Or he's got to that age where he think, look, I'll just empty it when I get home. Yeah. I'm not going to keep going up and going to the toilet, you know. It's, it's the ice that does it. Yeah, Carl is right, I think. It is the ice. What do you mean? People forget, you know, they say, oh, don't don't drink the water when you're on holiday, and they, and they don't, they drink, you know, they buy Evian and stuff. Oh, I see. But they forget about the ice. The ice cubes, you're right, in a bar, made from tap water. And that can do it, can it? Yeah. But what but, she, but, she what, said what, every what, time you're I drinking, I assume that she wasn't drinking ice then. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, why is it just having to yeah, Let's be honest, everyone that goes on holiday doesn't end up crapping themselves. Yeah, yeah, they usually make it to a it, toilet. He does it every time he drinks, doesn't he? Yeah, well, apparently... Just don't let him carry the baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's good, isn't he? Oh, Carl comes out with something. He does now and again, doesn't he? Carl, that was sweet, man. That yeah, sweet. nice one. Yeah, respect you. Well, I told you that time my brother-in-law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, I think moving in with my sister, and I was about, like, um, I don't know, 13, um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30, and I moved in, and uh, he brought round all um, uh, his records when he was storage to leave them at our house. Right, mm. and he had all these old sort of records, fifties and sixties records, no, I was right, and uh, um, and uh, they uh, put them upstairs, and I was looking through them, and uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff, and there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay, oh. and he had um, oh, well, loads of chemicals, <laughs> yeah, he had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry, and uh, he said, "Let's swap me some chemicals for them," so I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles, and I got all these chemicals, and uh, and then the guilt just hit me, I just thought, well, he's going to notice that. And I just, I, one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him, but you've got to be good. And it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then I remember um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it, and he said, did you ever um, uh, play those records I left for you? <sighs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't she? Oh. She, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And uh, that was it. That's that's but, why I was good. But you've <laughs> never you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Except know. that spate of uh, of shoplifting after that to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round uh, and uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did. I, I I just couldn't believe it. I, I just oh, that's it was terrible. I, I remember. Um, I, I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well, um, and. I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just just little things, just like magic markers and uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, that me, me mate Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, "I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you." And uh, she said, "What about?" She said, "I don't want to talk about it over the phone." So she goes, "Oh right, well, yeah, come round tonight then." So anyway. My mum sees me, she, she doesn't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God. I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So oh, not not big stuff. I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I'll just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at 7.2 per day. So, um... How so, many calculators do you need? So, anyway, <laughs> so it was when that phase... You failed maths, every, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so, anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed... To Computers like, will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confessed to... this magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She said, Brilliant. Oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. And it's some oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you... And he went, hold on, I'm going to work out the interest on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, bank of 10%. She'll owe you £4.40. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, did you, so, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, I, did 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you just, keep just... stuff with your, with that other? Because yeah, what I'm saying is, presumably you got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 no. Right, you didn't no that's ask. great. Music that matters. That sound weird to you. XFM. To make of the first genetically modified baby. Oh. Are you worried about do you, this? Do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing choosing the you know. Eye color well, this or, is the, or... this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like in the future if listen. they're being you know genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah, that's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But um. <laughs> I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right? You might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right? Because I remember when when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> All right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a <laughs> Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So like being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, does she look like? But anyone can tattoos clean up. Look like make, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make a place look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have. Has you seen a horse do it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of leather? <laughs> right? Um, oh, that's great. I'd Did Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking He's for out. it? I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he get a horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But keep it out of the kitchen. <laughs> I don't want you going Catelyn rustling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! Open the patio door as well, I'll be... Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what <laughs> do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think... He had to... a horse? Yeah, right. So That's I... why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway... Yeah, it's always so... to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh... The horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like, walking around. <laughs> oh, God! This, what? And when I, when I was doing... I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius. Went... It just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? Well, Wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Because it's always going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track, Carl. It's deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. We were talking, we were doing White Van Man. And uh, we got on to... Uh, um, we got on to, to genetically, like, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse. And then he got on to... He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family. And who had the horse in the family? It was... Because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's well, you relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but, but what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a... And no disrespect to her. Bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. 
Right. <laughs> okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be poor. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to it. Okay. All right. So, and so, who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse. Yeah, from I don't know where there was a. I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long? No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No. In what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity, and they said you can do anything to to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas, and I thought that's good. What was the charity? But forget. Well, I don't know. I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money-making overweight. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked my mum for some, because uh, she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they wouldn't have survived. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So as I went... The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they've been they, they feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet... <laughs> yeah, a yeah. horse in the living room. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. Um, yeah. And the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that. Because, no, but I was saying this the other day. And an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming on 64, yeah, rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, Oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, They've got. That dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat, though. They're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know Daddy, I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house exactly. you know for a start. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit. What were we talking about? It was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things, yep. right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby, Yeah. you treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese, <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. Now, when this family... Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in, the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not going to believe this, but it's a beautiful-looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And uh, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid. But as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit... <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? Oh, God! Now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly, and its hair was all patchy... It's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> And that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow! Whoa. Oh, life! Wow! That was a hell of a point. Oh, God! Cool. But am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. The XFM Vault, the Ricky Gervais Show, featuring Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. XFM. XFM Vault. 
The Ricky Gervais Show featuring Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. XFM. Can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? yeah. Um, uh, I called him out. I was like, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, he said, right, he said, you don't believe in them, but how do you explain this? Right, I went, go on. He said, uh, well, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, blog, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with his, with his cat. And uh, the phone rings, and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire uh, in your oven okay now? Because um, your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door, and there was two sort of people in sort of white coats, and they, and they came and said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in... My oven, and two, I'm not even married, all right? And he said, and they saw the cat, and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looks a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out, they look uh, uh, and uh, he said, and then he went back, and sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? Oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went, <laughs> That's the end of the I story. Went, what? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was going to say, <laughs> a year later he got married, but she died in an oven fire. Right? I thought it was going to be that. And I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah, or, 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 um, someone did report a fire in an oven, and their name was Johnson, and they looked up Johnson, they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board, or, and they sent around to the wrong person, right? You know, what? He, he, went, he went, yeah, I said, and I explained it to him, he went, yeah, why did they look at the cat funny? <laughs> Oh, man alive, Carl. This is really weird, right? I was, um, I was, uh, in my house once, right? And the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right? I opened the door, and there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, there was right? Some kids and there were some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door, and there was a like, bloke goes, You've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what did you think that was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you, three different people. Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen, about a wife that didn't exist, <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like. Um, Spirits, do they? <laughs> what, and the other blokes were ghosts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, yeah! Yeah, that's the explanation. So these are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts who walk the, to walk the earth as the ah! undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. Lycanthropy. What's lycanthropy? Isn't that wa werewolfism? Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Because, right. uh <laughs> Because they've, they've sort of grew up with uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So, no, uh, you see, two <laughs> things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two, been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories. It's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no there's kids who have been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> oh, oh, I've... Steve, this is no, too No, remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot in the head? Yeah. Um, and getting out with bacon and you were, like, laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this is the same you, thing. Have you is... seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked, They studied... drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads. People who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is. It's comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish? There? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God, right. Tell the story about the manhole cover. Right. In the same magazine, 
as a, as the one with the with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again. It gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on its yeah. face is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story. This was just uh, like physics. Explain. Physics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was right. going on about the uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. And uh, <laughs> they put they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> Blew it up. Yeah. Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> Man alive, Carl. Unexplained. What's no, no. going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> oh. oh. If anyone has ever seen that manhole cover, yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. What sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything. What would they do to a manhole cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Have yeah. of a do you reckon they could send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? Uh, what, what value is that? I might tell you what we could do. We could let the put the manhole cover on it and aim it, and then blow the bomb up, and it would it would the manhole cover would have someone's eye out. <laughs> fire it. See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. Whatever. Tie bangers to a bomb. See if it's louder. <laughs> oh God. <laughs>